Hey there. Over the years, I've had the opportunity to set up many brewing rigs for my friends, as well as myself. And over those years, I've seen fancy gimmicks come and go. As a result, if I were to set up my own brewing rig again, here are the six items that would make my shopping cart without hesitation. Here are the criteria I'm using to make the cut. First, affordability. I'm not against splashing out a little extra money on a high quality product. However, more money doesn't always equal higher quality. Two, versatility both in and out of the brew house. What else can the implement do? Three, portability. Does it store well? And four, durability. Does it do what it says for a long ass time? For the love of God, buy a quality thermometer. This is a Thermopen from Thermoworks. I've had this for about 10 years. And you're probably thinking, wow, 70 or $80 for a thermometer, that's a lot of money. And I don't disagree. However, by the time you go through four or five tailors or CDNs, you could have bought one of these. In addition to being super reliable and super accurate, this is a workhorse for temping meats. Next is a 3 8 OD stainless steel racking cane with 3 8 ID food grade silicon tubing and a number two bung. And I use this for hot side applications such as moving hot water or hot wort. In addition, the number two bung allows me to take this off insert it into a picnic tap and I can bottle from keg. So you get a lot of versatility with this. And this is probably 10 to $15. Next is a pin valve regulator atop a paintball CO2 tank. This is a great way to kind of get your feet wet with the kegerator situation without committing to the size of an expense of a bulk CO2 source. As you outgrow that, you can shift into this and still use this. For example, I use this to set lids and if I'm bottling off a keg, I'll use this inside and hook it up there. If you have the same tubing, so here I use a quarter inch OD polyethylene tubing, you kind of have a plug and play situation where if you have a bulk CO2 source and you run out, you can disconnect this, hook this up, and it'll get you out of a pinch until you can get this refilled. My next can't live without item in home brewing is the carbonation cap. It's about 10 bucks and I highly recommend getting the stainless steel variety. For with this, there's so many uses and so many things that you can do. You can carbonate water, you can carbonate kombucha. If you got kids or you have hard alcohol and you want some mixers, you can use this to top up your sodas or whatever so they don't go flat. In addition, if all your kegs are in use and you need to use it to, say, sanitize a beer line or clean a beer line, you can use this to do that. It should be no surprise that the keg is on this list because of its functionality. First, we obviously know that you can dispense beer from a keg. But you might not know is that it makes for a great measuring device. This is always 5 gallons or 19 liters. Furthermore, you can ferment from it to save yourself having to buy an extra fermenter and lastly, if you just have a single brew pot and you want to store your hot sparge water on the side, this makes for a great vessel. If you're looking for kegs, don't buy new. They're available all day long, typically on Marketplace and Craigslist for a fraction of the price. And for the last item on the homebrew shopping list must have, since I've got you talked into buying kegs, you might as well buy a couple spunding valves. Spunding valves allow you to pressure ferment in the keg, saving 80%, and you've got a couple different kinds. Here is a store-bought one, it's adjustable. You can get it from Kegland, it's called a blow tie. It's great. Or you can make your own, like I've outlined in this video here. DIY, it's super cheap. At any rate, you're saving 80% on CO2 and it's a must-have item for your brew house. Now for a couple honorable mentions. Here's a clear draft float system, or I recommend any float with a screen on it. It allows you to keg ferment, or you can put even fruit into a beer keg and you'll get to the fresh beer or the clear beer on top faster than the stuff in the particulate at the bottom. So highly recommend this. Now I wouldn't necessarily rush out to buy a sous vide just for brewing, but if you've got one anyways, there's a couple of applications that you can use it for. For example, in the summertime, if you don't wanna have an open flame in your garage or your barn to heat up your strike water, in your cooler, you can go ahead and have this and it'll heat up eventually and then you can start your mash and such without introducing extra heat. Secondly, if you only have the one brew pot and you need to heat some water up on the side and you have a keg, you can stick this in your keg and bring it up to the temperature that you need. So after 20 years of home brewing experience, these items time and time again would make any brewing setup I was gonna set up in the future. 
starting with high quality thermometers such as Thermopan by Thermoworks. We have over here the stainless steel racking cane, choose your brand, it doesn't matter, with the requisite food grade silicone tubing. Carbonation cap, you can carbonate anything under the sun. Uh, go with the stainless steel, don't go with the plastic, it's not that much money. You've got your spunding valves over here, whether it's a do-it-yourselfer or a preset one. They both kind of work the same. Of course, your keg, which doesn't need any introductions. You dispense beer, you can ferment beer in it, you can measure water, so on and so forth. Stainless steel clear draft float system is the one I prefer, although there are others. And a sous vide for heating up water and circulating water in a mash tun if you need it. All the items are in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.